Typing in a domain for a website has become so second nature that we don't even think about the format or components. But in fact, all those pieces have a name and a purpose. Hi everybody, I'm Emily. And I'm Emma. And as discussed in the intro for this course, A Guide to Domains, your website is just a folder of files and code that lives on a hosting server. Did you know that? <laughs> its location is a string of numbers called an IP address, similar to how longitude and latitude uniquely place a location on a map. And it would be super tough to remember, so we use domain names whose records point to the IP address as if to say, hey computer, Web website's over here. <laughs> no, over here. <laughs> well said. For this lesson, parts of the domain and domain extensions, let's break down that URL you type into a web browser into three parts. The central part is the secondary domain name, or SLD. In GoDaddy.com, the SLD is the word GoDaddy. After GoDaddy is the top level domain, or TLD.com. This is also called a domain extension or a domain suffix. The third part of a domain is the domain prefix or subdomain. If you've ever visited maps.google.com, maps is the subdomain. Subdomains are often used to separate different sections of a website, such as blogs, online stores, job boards, or support platforms. Okay, let's, let's review that visually. Mm -hmm. We start with a secondary domain, or SLD, mm -hmm. like GoDaddy, then the domain extension, or TLD.com. If we have a subdomain, that would go in front of GoDaddy, like blog.godaddy.com. When entering this in a website browser, we need to signal that we want to go to a website with the protocol HTTPS semicolon slash slash blog.godaddy.com. And you may be wondering, what's the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? It's the S. Oh, but you want to know, okay, you want to know what the S is, right. So the S in HTTPS stands for secure, which means an SSL certificate creates an extra level of security. And this certificate is an encryption that protects the sensitive data of the website's users. I know you're probably like going and checking all your sites right now to see if the S is there. Where's the S? Where's the S? If your website doesn't have an SSL certificate, you should strongly consider adding it through your web hosting account. And visitors are are hyper aware of their personal data online, and they may avoid an unsecured website. Okay, now let's return to the TLDs, those domain extensions. Now, in the early days of the internet, the only TLDs were what we now call generic TLDs. .com for commercial websites, .org for organizations, .gov for... Government! That's right, .edu for education, and .net for network technology companies. I would have missed that one. And since then, country code TLDs have emerged, like .us, .uk, and some of these TLDs are being used in unintended ways, like Anguilla's .ai for artificial intelligent websites, and Tuvalu's .tv for streaming. So cool. It's so very interesting. Cool. <laughs> New TLDs are released yearly. Some of the most popular are .shop for e-commerce stores, .me for personal brands, and .info for blogs and online resources. These new and descriptive TLDs can make getting the domain name you want much easier. As doggroomers.com may be taken, but doggroomers.vip, now that might be available. So how do you choose the best TLD? And should you get multiple versions of your SLD domain name with different TLDs? Yeah, so not to overwhelm you guys, <laughs> but there are over 1,500 TLDs and not all of them are available to everyone but what is available to you is still a vast number. And when choosing, it is best to consider the type of business or industry you are in, as well as the demographic of your visitor. And then there is the practice of using domains for creative spelling like .ly, country code for Livia, but used by many businesses to make fun short domains like URL shortener bit.ly. Use that a lot of work. I need to get emi.ly. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. Right? Look, there's something for everyone. The new dot site has become an excellent alternative to dot com as a generic domain extension and is rising in popularity. The question you may be asking is, does it matter for SEO what TLD I choose? I hope you're asking that. 
It's been reported that Google said that while your domain extension might not directly affect your search ranking, it might influence the audience's perception of a brand, therefore affecting the brand's click-through rate. CTRs, baby. Mm-hmm. The best advice might be to consider your individual goals when choosing a TLD. TLDs like .com and .org signal an established brand, and they're easier to remember. Mm -hmm. While newer domain extensions offer more availability and creativity. Yes, but if securing a .com TLD means your domain is it's long, it's hard to remember, maybe worth going with a shorter domain name and a new creative TLD. And for a complete list of TLDs, because I know you're asking for that, view the description in this lesson. Not every TLD listed may be available to you, just give me a heads up. Uh, also might not be available in your country, but you can easily search using GoDaddy's domain search once you have an idea of your secondary domain. And GoDaddy will also offer recommendations for additional available TLDs when you search, which is really nice. Yeah. Now that we have a general idea of what TLD we want to pursue, let's move on to the next lesson on strategies for finding the perfect SLD or secondary level domain.